Hey guys, today we're driving the 2021 Jaguar F-Pace SVR. This is a 550 horsepower, 5 liter supercharged V8 SUV. We have bucket seats, an 8-speed automatic transmission from ZF, a beautiful interior. It's been a while since we've been in a Jag, and it's fantastic to start things back up again with uh, this soundtrack. <laughs> I've only spent a few days in this car, so these will be some of my first impressions. Uh, let's take this thing for a drive today. We'll walk you around it first, show what it's like, and you can listen to the exhaust and the beautiful noise that this thing makes for the rest of the video. Headphones, highly recommended for that binaural audio. This SVR starts at around $86,000, including destination. As spec, it's about 97 grand. Uh, we've got quite a few options on here. This yellow metallic paint on its own is a $4,500 option. I think it's pretty cool. It's very yellow and very eye-catching. Really accentuates the lines and all of the design elements in this refreshed F-Pace. We have massive 22-inch forged alloy wheels. Look at these little details here for aerodynamics on the bottom, these little fender cutouts. Very cool looking SUV. They even carry through on the side. You don't see a lot of that on modern cars. It's usually right in the center there. Four exhaust tips. Of course, this is the same powertrain that Jag has used in their F-Type for quite some time. We've got a massive spare tire to fit over those big brakes if needed. Plenty of cargo space. I mean, this is the F-Pace after all. It's their practical SUV. Nice looking back seats. I love the cutout and the headrests. Let's take a seat behind myself here. That passenger seat's pushed pretty far back. All right, so seated behind myself at five foot 10, here's what rear legroom looks like. We've got a lot of space underneath the front seat. I like that to put our feet. This has the Meridian surround sound, premium audio. We'll test that at the end of this video. From the few times that I've listened to it already this week, it sounds awesome. Really nice sound system, definitely worth the upgrade if you're already spending the money. We've got rear climate control, a couple of USB-C ports back here, cigarette lighter port. These knobs have these funny push-pull motions, so you pull back to set the fan speed, and then when you push to set the temp temperature. All very interesting. Great looking interior. I think these seats are definitely a highlight. They're comfortable, they're really well bolstered, and uh, they just look cool. Let's hop out and I'll show you under the hood of this five liter supercharged V8. A lot of cool details in this SVR. No engine cover in this car. You get to see that supercharger in all of its glory. Nice weight distribution. The engine's pushed pretty far back over that front axle. Lightweight hood, too. Pretty neat looking SUV, in my opinion. Definitely a cool alternative to a lot of the competition. Before we take it out for a drive, let's hop in. I'll show you around the front seat. We'll take a look at the infotainment. So we have a fully digital gauge cluster here. It will default to showing you this view for most of the time. You can go in to a menu and change a bunch of different display options. These steering wheel buttons are a little bit laggy. You really have to press hard on them to get them to work, but you have a head-up display that you can enable. We're gonna run without that today. And it's just a little bit clunky to configure everything in here, but once you get it set, you pretty much don't have to worry about the screen anymore. And you just swipe up and it shows you the F-Pace right there in the center. 
tachometer on the right, speedometer on the left. You've got your trip, odometer, all that stuff down there. And check out this infotainment. This is a beautiful screen. I love the contrast. It's really sharp. It's reasonably responsive too. No wireless CarPlay that I could figure out this week, um, but it plugs in, comes up immediately. Look how massive this screen is. You're running ways larger than just about any other car on the road. There's a home button, which I really like, and you've got a bunch of frequently used apps and other things here. You can go into your climate control, set that. Cameras, we've got nice 360 cameras. We can see all the way around us. Various views. It would be kind of cool if you've paid $4,500 for this paint to actually have the paint color programmed into these displays, but uh, maybe that's asking a little bit too much. These 360 cameras are very neat though. Really my only complaint with the ergonomics and usability in this car is there's no quick button to turn off the stop start. Everything else though seems pretty easy to use. Like on the steering wheel controls, these climate controls are a little bit clunky. You really have to press hard in for the button to register and you get a little bit of haptic vibration when you do so. You've got your drive mode selector down here. You can choose between dynamic, comfort, eco, and ASDR, which I assume is just bad weather. We're gonna delete, just leave it in dynamic all day today because we get it opens the exhaust up a little bit more. And you also have an exhaust button, traction control, and uh, this off-road mode is what it looks like. We got a volume control right there, and this shifter, which is kind of funky. It's got a, a release on the back. Shows you a reverse camera, 360 cam from above. You pull back for sport mode on the transmission. A couple of cup holders here, one deep one and one shallower wide cup holder. Nice little place to put your phone here and has wireless inductive charging. You also get another USB type C port, USB A, another cigarette lighter plug right there. And then here is the glove box. 18 miles to the gallon combined, 15 in the city, 22 on the highway, 84,600 starting price, 97.3 as tested. All right, enough talking. Let's take this thing for a drive and see what it's like on the road. Love this massive panoramic sunroof. It's been a while since we've been in a Jag and I have missed them. They're just cool, fun cars. most exciting thing about this engine and exhaust is the pops and growls between shifts. It really rips. This 8-speed automatic is just about perfect. It makes all the right decisions. The paddle shifters are very responsive, willingly giving out downshifts. We don't get any excessive pops and burbles. This is just a beautifully tuned exhaust. In sport mode, when you're using the paddles, it will hold gears, which is great. Sometimes it can be pretty subtle from the inside, but when you get into it, it really wakes up. And I'm sure on the outside, it's pretty fierce. engagement in this SVR. Stiff pedal. Dynamically, this is just a fantastic car upon first impressions. Haven't tossed it around too many corners. I'm sure it still handles like an SUV, but your main inputs, the steering feels great. It's light, communicative enough. Let's try a launch controlled start. We'll turn off traction control. Put both pedals down. <laughs> this is 
got to have some of the best brake feel on any SUV I've tested. No supercharger wine, but guys, I'm not complaining. This has to be one of the best sounding SUVs on the market today. Not much else makes noises like this anymore. Let's settle down. We'll put it into comfort mode. The exhaust quiets down substantially. They're nicely sized, real metal, really nice quality, and a very nicely appointed interior too. Alcantara headliner, a little bit of suede here on the dashboard, beautiful stitching everywhere. The fit, the finish, the materials in here are really top notch. The only cheapness is in these haptic control buttons right here, but everything else feels pretty in line with what we've come to expect from Jag all these years. And maybe a little bit of an improvement. I love these Meridian speaker grills. The door handle feels really nice. Just, there's leather on everything. pretty good around a corner for an SUV. It's definitely not hiding its weight or its ride height, but as an 8 tenths handling experience, not too bad. I like the steering weight and for having adaptive suspension in dynamic mode, the ride is actually pretty nice. A little bit softer than I was expecting definitely daily it in this mode it'd be perfectly comfortable of course you're gonna get a little bit more cushiness out of comfort mode but as it is I would be perfectly happy with everything set to dynamic and uh, definitely worth it with the way the exhaust sounds let's talk about cruise control so you have Jags speed limiter which is kind of nice because you can set your maximum speed that you want to go with your right foot or you have cruise control Cruise control system is okay. It's a little bit clunky. The radar cruise seems to work pretty well. Lane keep assist is basically just lane keep assist. It's not really a lane centering system, or at least it doesn't function like it. It just bounces you back and forth between the lines. Mostly been leaving that off all week. You can skip five mile an hour increments, but you have to hold for about a second and a half for it to engage. So again, a little bit sluggish there. But the adaptive cruise seems to work fine, and uh, of course this, that, having that speed limiter is always a useful feature too.
fantastic exhaust and a pretty nice SUV to drive, honestly. Handling is pretty neutral. On throttle, it seems to rotate nicely. Kind of a foolproof package and fun to drive. It's exciting. It's engaging. The transmission is fantastic. It's really nice being able to just kind of play with that engine out with these paddles. And the sounds that it makes between shifts. like the British Trackhawk, but with a much nicer interior. Very little wind noise here on the highway. Very comfortable cruising at speed. Jaguar has always had funky shifters, and this one's definitely taken a bit to get used to. It takes a very light, delicate touch to shift it between drive and sport. said Jaguar too many times. Alright, one more entrance ramp. One more handling test. Just rockets out of corners. <laughs> A super SUV for the undomesticated. I mean, this is one of those cars where you can have your cake and eat it. You know, it kind of does it all got the ground clearance and the traction control system for a little bit of off-roading though I wouldn't recommend too much on these 22 inch wheels take the kids to school you'll never be late and I wouldn't say you could go as far as doing a track day in this car but you could definitely have a lot of fun It's just so good with the windows down, too. It is. show my face on camera for a reason so you guys can enjoy the driving experience and not have to look at my mug but just know that I've been smiling pretty much this whole drive brutal brutal and I love it all right well I mean guys that's the f-pace SVR um, ton of fun pretty nice execution on Jaguar's part they've done a really good job with this the infotainment the controls it's all livable it's all usable it looks nice the materials in here are pretty top-notch this feels like a hundred thousand dollar SUV and the performance the dynamics the driving experience here is pretty darn good I'm impressed this is a awesome car you could probably do without the yellow paint I mean 4500 bucks 
Um, you really gotta want yellow at that price. But I'm not mad about it. It's a pretty cool spec. That'll conclude our drive in the F-Pace SVR. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will uh, end this video with a brief sound system test of this Meridian Audio. We'll walk you around one more time, show you what it looks like, and then um, we'll just go right into playing some of our test tracks. Very, very cool. Kind of a perfectly sized SUV too. Not so big that it feels too cumbersome. Practical enough, spacious enough on the inside, but you can uh, you can toss it around the corners and it still feels agile and nimble without having to hide too much weight. All right, we'll go into Apple CarPlay sound test playlist. We'll turn up our volume. And like I said earlier, this is a pretty nice sound system.
okay. I've had my fun. <laughs> you gotta love any car that brings out the child in you. And that's one of my favorite things about this SVR is that it is a fun SUV to drive and that list is very short.